Luigi's Mansion 3. The spookiest Luigi game to date. With three entries in the franchise now, there's one question that remains. How are this game's bosses? Can they compete against the previous two entries? Let's rank them first to find out. My name is Junior Leva, aka Mr. Awesome, and today we're ranking the bosses in Luigi's Mansion 3. Before we start this list, I'm going to sadly omit Bulasis since he was a scare scraper boss and I didn't really play much of that mode. Um, if anything to make up, I will most likely make a scare scraper list down the line since I've also missed the scare scrapers bosses from Dark Moon, so we'll come back to that. Starting off this list is sadly Polter Kitty, both of her encounters. I'll be honest with you guys, these quote unquote fights were just very tedious and it, it I don't know even I don't even know why it's in the game. Polter Kitty would rob the homie Luigi of his well earned, well deserved and well earned elevator button, you know the one he just got from beating the bosses prior, only to make us the player chase Polter Kitty across various floors in the hotel. And this gets very annoying and very, very tedious. I don't know who at Lex Level Games thought that the Poulter Pup variant was so fun in, in Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon that they had to bring this back for the third game. Whoever decided to do that, I would like to have a word with you and ask you why. What was so good about this boss? Even when you encounter this ghoulie cat, you have to stay still in order for her to attack you. Because if you move for some whatever reason, she just gets freaked out and she goes back to her spot, which is... I don't understand. This is not what I'm used to fighting, you know? I'm used to facing ghosts head on, you know? But apparently here, all you have to do is stand still, wait for her to attack you, and then bang! You flash a light, and you suck up one of her tails, and then you chase her off to like another floor in the mansion. You know, rinse and repeat. Once you do all that, you finish her off, and you get your elevator button back. I like the bosses in this game so far, but Luigi's Mansion 4 better not have any of this BS. Please, no more Polter Pop, no more Polter Kitty, no more Polter whatever bunny. I don't want none of those chases. Polter Pop can stay because he's the homie, but not none of these chases anymore, please. Alright, so at number 17, I honestly didn't know that this was a boss ghost just because it was kind of random. It didn't seem like one at all until I started doing my research for this video. And it turns out the steward, the one you face at the beginning of the game, is a boss. And I didn't really know, but, you know, once I started looking at my footage... I realize he gives you two elevator buttons as opposed to one, so this kind of makes him really important. So yeah, he's at the bottom of the list. Yes, he's the first boss. He's not a bad boss by any means, it's just very forgettable. His fight is in the garage, and he likes to throw suitcases at you. You know, much like the people that work at airports, I've seen you guys throw luggage. So yeah, the first boss is... Steward, the first boss of the game, is not a bad boss at all. Really good boss to teach you the, the new mechanics of the new vacuum and honestly, I forgot about this one. Let's just move on. Chambria is located in the fifth floor here on the hotel and her only mission as opposed to being the maid is to put a halt onto Luigi's progress. And let me tell you, she does a really good job at it, especially if you're. this is your first playthrough of the game. She literally takes Egad's suitcase from his room and just dips. She goes room to room, expecting you to catch her. This is way better than the Polter Kitty fights though, don't get me wrong. What's cool about her fight is that it's more of a tutorial on how to use the plunger mechanic because the plunger mechanic is a new thing. And once you get the gist of the plunger mechanic, 
you use that to take her down, literally and figuratively. It's a great boss to teach you what you're not familiar with, and this boss, as opposed to the previous one, feels like how a portrait ghost would be back in the original Luigi's Mansion. And that felt like a good feeling again, you know? So this one is a sand arena fight with a pharaoh who's very narcissistic, as all pharaohs are, so I'll give, I'll give her the benefit of the doubt of just being accustomed to being narcissistic, but I can't give her the benefit of the doubt of being so low on this list. Serpsi's fight really doesn't have much depth to it other than sucking up the sand and flashing the ghost a few times. Wow, I really just summarized this boss in mere seconds. Don't get me wrong though, this boss could have been way better, especially since it's like a boss mid-game. It could have done things a lot better, but you know, it just, it falls flat. I didn't really like it. Dr. Potter is found on the seventh floor at the garden suites with his plant life. It's kind of adorable in a planty way. This boss fight, albeit not the best in the game, really had me, you know, Really had a sense of, oh my god, what am I gonna do? How am I gonna take this dude down? Because I was getting my butt kicked left and right till I realized there was a chainsaw. I used my brain meats and used that chainsaw to my advantage. So what I did, I lured Dr. Potter's plant to chomp its teeth and bang! I cut that damn plant in half with the chainsaw and boy oh boy! Did that chainsaw feel oh so satisfying? And if anything, looking back at this fight, Dr. Potter wasn't really the menace. It was more his plant. But I do gotta get I got do gotta commend this. If it wasn't for the chainsaw, Dr. Potter would have definitely been way lower on the list, lower than it is, but that chainsaw just feels oh my Jesus. Before we move on, did anyone notice that this whole area, this whole floor felt like that one mansion from Luigi's Mansion 2? Or, you know, Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon. I just had to throw that out there. It was, it was a cool reference. So, I'll be honest with you. Um, I thought this boss fight was just, like, a throwaway boss. Uh, you know, like a mid-boss type of situation. But it wasn't. It was an actual boss. So, the boss in question, his name is Ugg. Sounds like a cool caveman name. Ugg took possession of a T-Rex in the museum, and yo, he caused a lot of destruction. And I'll come out cleanly and say that this boss was hard. It was, it was unusually hard. I was like, wow, what am I gonna do? I like this boss mostly because of the use of my brain meats and my sense of urgency of, oh my god, what am I gonna do? And the destruction it caused. It was, it was very good, very nice. This boss fight was very comedic. I enjoyed every second of it. Crueler reminded me of a cowardly Jim Hopper and Paul Blart mix. I mean, the homie pulled out a gun. Not any old gun though, a water gun. But why? How is a water gun so dangerous? Well, unfortunately for the homie Guigi, this is deadly. Because this is a Guigi boss fight. Oh my god. I was so happy when I started using Guigi. Luigi didn't have to do a single thing here besides watch. I know Luigi was, was kind of relaxing, you know? So, in the boss fight, Cruller would shoot water at Guigi and take him out. So, you had to obviously dodge the water with Guigi so you wouldn't be, you know, donezo. And even, like, even in the fight, if you use the flash, Homie uses his sunglasses to like not be blinded which I'll give you this my friend if you wear sunglasses indoors you either have a black eye or you just like sunglasses but this dude had a good excuse to wear sunglasses I mean just look at this I really like this boss and I can confidently say that this is the funniest boss fight I've had in recent years Guys, this boss fight was really creative. Captain Fishhook is a literal shark who possessed a pirate ship. I'm basically fighting the arena. The arena is against me. The floor I stand on is against me. That 
that's so freaking cool. And for a few minutes, this boss was giving me the whooping of Luigi's life. Not of my life, but of Luigi's life. Because I had no idea what to do. There was these gold ghosts on the top. They would throw bombs, like those barrel bombs at you. And I was thinking, oh wait, those are gold ghosts. I think these have money. So I was already trying to flash them and still getting hurt. But no, they're, they're just there to, to aid, quote unquote, Captain Fishhook on taking Luigi down. But if anything, you use these barrels to your advantage to take Captain F Fishhook down. You have to feed the captain a barrel with the bombs in order to lure it out and suck it up. So, you know, once it goes boom, the shark comes out and then you do your deed. But before you finish him off at the third phase, bro, he tilts the ship and eats Luigi alive. He doesn't kill Luigi, which, you know, he could, but he doesn't. I'm pretty sure this attack is dodgeable because you could have used your plunger on that one target, but I just couldn't do it. The homie Luigi just got finessed, bro. It's a very creative boss, but it got repetitive really quick with this barrel mechanic, but dude, I fought an arena. That's pretty dope. So entering the top 10 is DJ Phantasmagoria. Phantasmagoria's fight was an interesting one. As a guy who likes the whole vibe of the club, I was very intrigued on how this boss fight was going to play out. Before you fight her, you have to deal with her eight red hooded ghosts, and they're all dancers, you know, we've all seen dancers, they dance pretty cool. And these dancers, they have the elevator button, the one that was so casually just chilling there. You have to find out who has the elevator button and suck them up. Once you do that, you fight the DJ herself. Her boss fight is pretty tricky, not gonna lie. I kept dodging her vinyls in hopes she would reveal her weak spot, but nothing. She wasn't doing anything. I was really like, yo! I tried the plunger, I tried using the suck, the stroll bulb, and nothing. Till I mistakenly hit the back triggers and realize this is it. So what you do, you go up next to her and you jump near her when she does like, when she's ready to attack you with the vinyls and her wig just goes up from the pressure and then you flash her, she stuns and you suck her up really good. Please don't take this out of context. I love this fight, not only for the theme, the challenge and the fact that I got the elevator button but mostly because she has this fiery aura to her. It reminds me of the Super Saiyan God. The, the fiery aura she had was pretty dope. Marco Polo is what this boss kind of felt like. This boss fight was with Cam the Mechanic and the boss fight was with some rubber duckies. This boss fight was really challenging to control and get used to because of the rubber duckies. I had two game overs when I fought this dude and I was struggling pretty bad. But with any fight, you have to play it safe and remember what's in your arsenal, especially with Luigi's Mansion 3. I managed to get the water movement down packed and by down packed, I mean barely. I kept popping my ducky onto these spikes and had to keep blowing new rubber duckies. Shoutouts to Luigi for having infinite rubber duckies. Even though it was hard to maneuver, and it was hard to give the boss a run for his money, once I did it, it felt kind of satisfying. It, it didn't feel like it was the sage's fault. It felt more like it was my fault. Like maneuvering a pool. Try try going on, on the lazy river with a, with a rubber ducky floaty and moving around at your own leisure. That, that's kind of hard. This boss deserves its ninth spot for its major creative decision. I had a rubber ducky fight. I liked it. He was pretty good, pretty, pretty watery. At number eight is the magician fight with Nikki, Lindsay, and Ginny. And right off the bat, I loved the different setting. We were transported to what it seems like another dimension, but with a small arena, which added to the challenge. This is a three phase fight and you have to suck up each magician ghost per phase. So three ghosts, three phases. But just pay attention to the hat spinning because the first phase, you know, the hats are spinning and then you do your thing and then you suck up the first ghost. But when the second phase hits, 
there's only two ghosts, and one of them has a bomb. So, you gotta keep an eye of the two ghosts, and then choose wisely when the time is right to suck up the ghost. But if you choose wrong, BOOM! You have to do everything all over again. And by everything, I don't mean the whole thing, it's just that one phase. One thing that stood out to me here was when you're in the last phase. That last phase is just one ghost and two bombs. So you gotta use your eyes for this. It felt like some Mario Party mini game. You're out here tracking that single hat. And then all of a sudden, lights out. Bro, when I told you I stood out from my bed really quick to not lose focus, I did. I, I don't know how fast I got out of my bed. And amongst doing all that, I lost focus and boom, I, um... I lost but after all is said and done i gotta say really great boss it made me use my brain meets in a new way you know mario party like way i wish bosses you know in other games were kind of creative like this you know i i really had to pay attention to this this right here was a challenge especially early on the game chef souffle hits number 7 despite being the 4th boss of the game because of his utter environmental destruction. He really wants Luigi dead, like if he was a mouse in the kitchen. This fight felt very hectic and fun and honestly made me love Luigi's Mansion 3 even more. I, I couldn't believe that we're now playing a game where even the objects and the surrounding furniture feel alive. Well, as, as alive as furniture and objects can be. Essentially, this boss taught me that using what's around you can serve as projectiles in any potential battle. You know, since the, like I said before, the objects, they just feel alive, man. It's, it's those great things I love about new hardware. You can do new mechanics like that. Shout out to Next Level Game, yo, for using the Switch's hardware. To be honest, I feel like this ghost was a pun on Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp End is a boss with 60 HP, but don't think that this fight is going to be easy peasy. No, 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 no. While it ain't as hard as the ones I mentioned before, it certainly had me thinking. So first, you get to play what's essentially dodge volleyball, and obviously your main objective right now is to avoid getting rocked by his balls. So hide when you can and make sure to strike while he's ready to attack you. Once he's unconscious, sneak out the homie Goigi and walk him over to the other side and... Oh wait, he just got melted. Bet. Do what I just said all over again, but avoid getting wet. Which means keep switching from Goigi and Luigi and sink him down to the ground and he's all yours. What made me put Johnny Deep and so high on the list... Was yeah, you know, because of the the volleyball dodgeball game, but more of that tension you had of sneaking Guizzi towards the back while avoiding Johnny Deep and spinning at him. It was that tension was pretty real, and despite the fact that this boss is extremely easy once you get the gist of it, it felt like a, a breath of fresh air that I really needed. I know I'm probably not the only one that's mentioned this. I think this dude could be best friends with Biff Atlas from the original Luigi's Mansion. All right, kicking off the top five is King McFrights. This is a gladiator style battle. It was pretty interesting. It's the sixth boss in the game and it taught me to be on my toes because this boss, as interesting as it is, it's a very challenging one. This ghostly menace gave me my first game over. I like the arena setup, it felt really cool. I felt like this boss was gonna be grandeur, like the coup de gras, the major deal when I, once I saw it in E3, but once you actually face him, it really isn't a big deal at all. This fight is very easy once you get comfortable, and the boss plays it safe for the most part. But what puts this boss literally in the top 5 was honestly because this dude really gave me a run for my money, man. And I, I appreciate the challenge where I can get it. It was very well deserved. Very, very well deserved. Ah yes, 
I was itching for this fight from the very beginning. Helen Gravely, the hotel owner. Before I continue, let me say this. This ghost has an obsession with King Boo. She had all these porches of her with him. I mean, her bedroom has King Boo pillows. Talk about a little obsessive. Enough about that though, we're not here to talk about her obsession, we're here to talk about her fight. Her fight was another Guiji and Luigi fight, but this time the homie Guiji was underneath, basically behind the scenes, or technically underneath the scenes, while Luigi took care of her on top. Guiji had to turn off the colored beams, which in terms gives Luigi more room to fight Helen. Helen, like most bosses, are immune to the flash, but what's cool about her she counters the light you flash at her back towards Luigi with her uh, King Boo mirror. And this in turn stuns Luigi like homie gets stunned. You know, once you realize you can't really stun her, you wait for her to attack and once she strikes, bang! That's your attempt to suck her up and she's all yours. If anything, this fight made me trust Luigi's run because boy oh boy. Were these lasers anxiety inducing to dodge? I was out here making the same face as Luigi. I like this fight overall because it puts your dodging skills to the test along with your ability to multitask with Luigi with you. So if you're not really good at multitasking, good luck or get a second player because wow. Before we commence number three, let's get this out the way. This boss reminds me of the piano from Super Mario 64. Is this why it's number 3? In part, yes. But entirely, no. Amadeus Wolfgeist is number 3 because... Do you see how much destruction there is in this fight? We essentially destroyed a whole theater. And this was the first boss that gave you a lot of room to maneuver in. And you're just out here destroying stuff. This boss was overall very fun and satisfying to take down, literally and figuratively, unlike most bosses mentioned on this list. Next level games, I applaud you for making a piano fight fun. You guys are amazing. The next game, I would like more destruction, please. <laughs> you guys are gonna kill me for this one. So at number two, is King Boo. Yes, yes, I know I'm doing this again. And I know some of you guys are gonna be like, why isn't he number one? I mean, yeah, he's the final boss, but to be honest, King Boo plays it safe for the most part. And if anything, as of me right now, I can consider that this is the weakest King Boo fight. But the reason why it's so high on the list is because this fight has some serious tension to it. Your loved ones just got recaptured, and it's up to you to take them down. I don't know about you guys, but the tension for me was sort of real. This fight borrowed the lightning mechanic from the previous King Boo fight in Dark Moon. So if you play that game, you're, you're familiar with what's going to happen. But this time around, he slams his tongue on you, and it takes out a lot of health. Like, yo, a lot of health. So dodging is really key, especially once he plays jump rope with his tongue. It's it's weird that he could do that, but all you gotta do is just dodge. At one point he throws fireballs and you know, you just dodge again. And then he throws out these spike balls. These spike balls are your ticket to victory because inside these spike balls, there are bombs. And that's what you use to take him out. And I like that little face he makes once you throw the bomb in. He just looks, he looks left and right. And then he's like, oh, well, I'm fucked. But after that, you know, the next phase, the next phase is he multiplies himself. So essentially, the fight itself becomes harder. It's like fighting the Magician Girls again, but with King Boo. What I like about this fight was mostly that Guiji and Luigi had to flip King Boo together. But as per always, the ending of the fight is very anticlimactic. Next level games, you could have put a line or something. You could, you could have made King Boo do something drastic last minute -y. If anyone from Next Level Games is watching, what well, would have been cool if Luigi used that power up, that last power up, you know, the ultra suck, to suck up King Boo as a last ditch effort. 
something like that would have been really cool. It would have, it, it would have definitely felt more not anticlimactic. And finally, number one. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I had a ton of bias with this one. This boss hit the right notes for me in every way possible in terms of the things I like. And also for the first time, had me feeling sad in the Luigi game. For real quick, a little backstory on myself. So I went to college for film and got my bachelor's degree for it. And one day, someday, I would like to become a director and make movies. And this boss fight resonated home with me because of Morty the director. Morty saw Luigi and threw him in the movie. He had no intention of killing Luigi. He just wanted Luigi as an actor. So essentially the fight was Luigi versus a Godzilla knockoff, which was really cool. It took place in a city, in a miniature city at that, because you know they, they made Luigi and the knockoff Godzilla look really big. And this fight was the best. I was I was really enjoying this fight on, on stream when I was playing it. There was this one point where there's like an energy ball and he throws it at you and Luigi has to counter it and retaliate and deflect the energy ball back at the ghost. But there's this one part where Luigi had to come on board and they double teamed that energy ball against Godzilla and it felt like a scene ripped out of Dragon Ball Z. And I love Dragon Ball. And this fight was just a lot of fun. Dude, fight that shit right back. Come on. Ah! Ah! Hold up, I might need Gooigi for this shit. Ah! Ah! I can't do this mad people. Fucking in this house. Not fucking in the house, but like in the house. Holy fuck, now's your chance to achieve stardom. <laughs> Yo, these dudes. Oh! Ah, Holy fuck, this fucking battle is dope. But once you capture the goob ghost that was taking quote unquote possession on Godzilla, Morty gives you the elevator button. You don't fight Morty, he just gives it to you. And then after you receive it, he moves on to his editing room to edit. But at this point, oh my god, at this point, you choose whether to suck him up or leave him alone to finish his movie. And guys, this felt like Undertale all over again. I, I can't believe the decision I made. I'm I killed Morty. I I feel sorry. You Morty made the homie Luigi feel special and wanted, and I took him out like he was any old ghost. Morty, if you're real, forgive me. I'm about to play this game again just to see him alive, cause I didn't even see the movie. Wait, I could have let him live. No! Thank you guys for watching this ranking video. For those of you that reached the end, you get a gold star. Because without you making it here, YouTube wouldn't recommend this video as much. So thank you. You're making my watch time that much better. Also, a huge thank you to my members. You guys help keep the lights on here in my apartment. Without the lights, I can't make videos. And also, thank you to those lovely people wearing the Mr. Awesome merch. You guys are really awesome. Shout out to the both of you. Make sure to get your very own Mr. Awesome merch. You know, the ones featured here. Link is down below. And subscribe for more Luigi videos, because I have a whole boatload of Luigi videos in the pipeline. Until next time, subscribe and turn on those notifications and stay golden.